Hi, this is Chris Hodge with the OpenStack Foundation, and today we're going to talk about the latest release of OpenStack, Kilo. We're going to start off by logging into the OpenStack dashboard as an administrator. OpenStack is a set of software tools for building and managing cloud computing platforms. It lets you manage compute, networking, and storage resources. We're going to start off by launching a compute instance. We begin by naming it, selecting the image source, choosing some access and security like key pairs to inject into the system and the network to attach to, and then launch the machine. We can also associate a floating IP address to the, to the instance so that we can access it from an external network. So now the instance is up and running and has a public IP address associated with it. Next, we're going to create and attach a volume to the system. We give the volume a new name, specify a size, and hit Create Volume. Now we can manage the attachments and attach the volume to the instance we just created. Specify a mount point and attach the volume. OpenStack Kilo allows you to manage an entire library of machine images that you can boot. It's easy to create an image, either from an image location on somewhere on the web or from a file located on your disk. We select an image, some basic attributes of it like public and protected, and the image has been uploaded to our OpenStack system. We can also control access and security for our cloud, including firewall rules. So for example, if you wanted to run a secure web server, you could allow HTTPS traffic into your nodes, into your security group. You can also specify key pairs that are injected for passwordless login. You can create a new key pair, and it's downloaded to your machine. You can allocate new floating IPs to your project. A floating IP allows you to attach an external IP address to instances so that you can log in remotely. OpenStack Kilo comes with a wide range of network settings for you. Using the power of software-defined networking, you can build out arbitrarily complex networks. For example, we want to build out a new IPv6 network to add to our existing network infrastructure. So we specify a name, a network address range, the IP version, set some more details related to the subnet like having a DHCP server active, and the new network is created. We then want to attach this network to our public network, so we create a new router that has an external network as the public network. And then we, cre we create a new interface that connects to our IPv6 network. Through the network topology interface, we can also access information about the machines. Like the instance we just booted up, we can see that it's on the public network and is able to see OpenStack.org. And additionally, we can use our private key that we injected into the system to log into this to log into it remotely. We also get a wide range of options for managing your network, including load balancers, firewalls, and VPNs. Next, we'll talk about large object storage. These are remotely addressable objects that can be either public and visible. Objects are visible to on a public interface. So for example, we have an asset, which is the OpenStack Cloud logo. And we just feed that into our web browser. And it's visible to everybody. You can also have private data where you need a key to be able to access files. And you can upload and 
delete and create new objects as you wish. It's also easy to change the visibility. OpenStack also includes a very powerful orchestration engine that allows you to automate the creation of applications that you run on your cloud. So I'll show you an instance of a simple template to, to deploy a small cluster. In this case, the cluster is going to have a control node and two worker nodes attached to two different networks. So we give a name to the stack, enter in some basic information like our password, the data network to connect to, the image name that we want to boot, the key we want to inject into the systems, and the private network that we want to connect to. We hit launch, and going into the view of the stack, you can see the resources being provisioned automatically. When we go back to the network topology view, you can actually see the three resources that we created, the two workers and the one control node, being brought up automatically. The OpenStack orchestration engine gives you a wealth of resources that you can manage from your compute resources, to your network, to your storage. In the administrator view, you have a complete overview of what your system looks like, as well as detailed views of the resource usage and the entire health of your system. For example, you can see instances that are up, volumes, the flavors that are available to boot, images that have been uploaded, all of the networks and the routers that are attached to them, and also a view of the system resources that are running and the individual services that are running for, for each OpenStack component. Finally, OpenStack gives you complete control over how you manage the identity of your users. So for example, you can create new users, giving them an email, password, a project to assign them to, and a role within that project. Within the projects themselves, you can manage the members and their roles inside of that. So for example, we can add heat stack user to the new user we just created. We hope you enjoyed this tour of some of the features that OpenStack Kilo has to offer. Thanks for watching and have a good time with OpenStack.